for Troy. 4XS, high altitude. Wow, nice job, beautiful job. That's just perfection. Beauty on a 16 square meter at high altitude. Trevor, here he goes, on a 14 square meter, and very little wind, hoorah, that is a 5 extra small, or 14 square meter dominator, that is super skills, from Super Trevor, very incredible, so the real question is, actually the most difficult question in the sport, is which size of glider should I choose? And there's a lot of factors to that one. Most importantly, skill level. And of course, what glider? So you'd be talking about Dominator is, you know, it's gonna be very different than other wings that don't have as much lift. You're gonna have to fly a much, much bigger glider. Like it takes, actually even the 29 square meter Dudek doesn't produce as much lift as the 16 square meter dominator. Watch the side-by-side -side glide comparison and literally the 16 square meter dominator has a lower sink rate than their 29 square meter. So you can see why it's near impossible to launch that 29 square meter, especially with a higher aspect ratio, when the dominator is no problem even for little kids. It produces more lift, but more importantly, as far as ease of launch, it produces more lift at a lower speed. Now, there's also age, weight, altitude, and of course, skill level, all factors, and experience level have to do with which glider size you pick. Big difference here. If you've got master level skills, then you're pretty much always gonna fly the smallest glider you can easily launch because you want that extra speed so that you can penetrate any adverse wind conditions. You know, if you fly thousands and thousands and thousands of flights, at some point you're gonna get caught in some 30, 35 mile an hour gust from it. And if you do that and you're on a huge 29 square meter, well, you're gonna be going backwards and in a world of hurt. That's a very bad situation. But if you're on like an extra small dominator, then 35 mile an hour winds, that's nothing. Even fast trim will do that. That's, it's, so it's totally no problem. You could fly right through those conditions. So by having a smaller wing, it allows you to fly in much more adverse conditions and a much wider range of weather conditions. Because if all you have is a huge 29 square meter, well, if there's 10 mile an hour wind, you can't fly because your glider's too slow. And, you know, 10 miler on the ground is usually like 25 mile an hour in the air. <laughs> so, it, you know, it's the, uh, as you go up in altitude, you usually get more wind. So if you have 10 mile an hour on the ground, as you go up, it gets higher and higher. That's why if you have a bigger glider, you're very limited in when you can fly. But with a smaller dominator, you keep that same level of safety which safety is another factor in that size of glider and what you're doing. So you want a small glider, but you also don't want to sacrifice safety. You want to maintain the highest level of safety that you can. So it's all about skills. That's what it ultimately comes down to. So let's say wide don't you want to fly a smaller Dominator? Well, the guy who doesn't want to fly the smaller Dominator is the guy that doesn't have the skill to be able to deal with a little higher speed. Um, and oscillation is another issue. The, on, you know, one incredible thing about a smaller glider is it's very responsive. It does exactly what you tell it to. 
One bad thing about a smaller glider is it's more responsive. It does exactly what you tell it to. So if you're just starting out and you accidentally yank a foot of brake, that smaller glider is going to flip completely sideways and do exactly what you told it to. Where a bigger glider is gonna respond slower and be more forgiving of over-controlling and mistakes on control inputs. So you don't wanna to go to too small of a glider too fast. Also, when you take off to launch, the smaller the glider, the higher the stall speed. So, and the shorter the brake range. So a, a typical, you know, say 25 square meter, where you could first, you know, bury the brakes on a Dominator and the thing wouldn't stall. But if you went to a 14 square meter and buried the brakes right off a of launch, you could literally stall the glider out of the sky. So you do have to have the skills and experience to be able to deal with those smaller size gliders. Oscillation is an issue. If you start oscillating back and forth and doing the wrong thing and creating pilot induced oscillation, it can get a lot more violent a lot more quickly. So you really wanna have your oscillation under control before you go to smaller sizes. Same with torque. If you let the motor torque and you don't know how to weight shift properly and eliminate torque, and the motor torque steers the glider, well, a smaller glider is going to respond much more quickly to that torque steer. So it would be a lot more lively. Again, you wanna have the skills to be able to deal with the smaller sizes. So ultimately, there are numerous factors. So really, you're not the one to pick which glider or glider size you fly. The guy you want picking your glider and size is the best and most experienced and most honest pilot in the world who's going to help you do that correctly. Even if you're an intermediate pilot that's been flying for years, you really should not be picking your glider. You should still be working with the best. Why? Because there's no reason not to. What's the drawback of having the most experienced and skilled pilot in the world that understands everything that's gonna happen to you, giving you input on which glider to choose? It just, there's no downside. It's something you talk through with them. You work it out and maybe even try a couple different sizes. Try the size they recommend, then, you know, if it's a little too sporty, you could go to a bigger size. If it's not sporty enough, you can drop to a smaller size. And that's, of course, one of the great things about dealing with Paraglider Mall is you're not stuck with any glider you buy from us. We're always happy to swap you back and make sure that we get you the very best and most optimal glider for you specifically at your exact skill level. And as your skill level changes, you can trade that glider back in and swap sizes very easily with us. So you can always continue to progress in glider size. So which glider size you fly is absolutely critical. It really has a lot to do with safety and getting the most out of the sport and being able to have the widest range of weather conditions when you can fly. So that you can fly whenever the heck you want, wherever the heck you want, and not have to be worried that you're stuck on the ground 98% of the time, like people who don't have proper gear in front, where they're always sucking their thumb, wishing they could fly, but, oh, it's eight mile an hour wind, it's too much, can't fly today. Oh, it's past 9 a.m., I can't fly, it's too turbulent. Where, if you got the right uh, size glider and you got the skill and you got a dominator, you can fly whenever the freak you want. So you just don't have those issues. So ultimately, when it comes to picking the glider, don't pick your glider. That is not something you want you to do. You want the absolute most experienced pilot in the world helping you very closely with that decision. So call me directly, 800-707-2525, and just talk to me specifically and let me help you get the very best size that's gonna stack all the odds in your favor as much as possible. It's all about stacking odds in your favor.